Hi, Elizabeth Adams in an attic in Baltimore to tell you about the new releases from the authors at Jane Austen Variations. So first up is Abigail Reynolds' latest book, The Price of Pride. This one is pretty angsty. If you're a person who likes high angst books, you want to feel all like, <laughs> then this is the book for you. So basically what happens is Wickham is an evil little monster and does something really terrible. So Elizabeth ends up engaged to Darcy's younger brother, Drew Darcy. And as you can imagine, this is extremely stressful for every single person involved in this situation. And I'm not gonna spoil it for you and tell you how they fix all of this, but it does have a happily ever after, just so you know, so you're not like completely twisted up inside. And what I really like about this one is that Darcy is an amateur botanist. So I like the trend lately that we're seeing of characters having a little like scientific quirk or something, you know, like a funny little hobby that makes them a little more unique than you would normally expect. So there are some fun things with that that you'll see and quite a few surprises, but the kind of the surprises that I like best come towards the end. So I'm not going to tell you because it will ruin it. But angsty book and if you remember my food meter of angst levels i'm gonna put this one at like steak dinner followed by a slice of new york style cheesecake that's that's the level for this one i think then jack caldwell has just released rosings park which is the fourth book in his jane austen's fighting men series so this series has four books in it first is the three colonels and then there's the scar the last adventure of the scarlet pimpernel sorry and then is um, Persuaded to Sail, which we talked about in the summer video. But this one is not a continuation of the one in the, the two in the middle, because they're kind of standalone books. This one circles back to the first book and follows those couples. So we're following Colonel Fitzwilliam and his wife, who was the previous Anne de Berg, and Caroline Bingley, now Caroline Buford, and her husband, Sir John, and a little bit of Darcy and Elizabeth. And because this is 1816, it's right after the Napoleonic Wars. So there's a lot of coming back into civilian life after a war because both Colonel Fitzwilliam and Sir John were in the army. And so there's a lot of dealing with that in all the ways that you would expect and some that you wouldn't. And getting used to being married and learning how to run an estate because Colonel Fitzwilliam was a soldier and what does he know about farming? So there's a lot to be learned and a lot of growing and a lot of dealing with the nitty gritty of the marriage, which I think is, I'm learning is a little bit typical of Jack's book. So he kind of gets into that, into how the marriage grows, how these people grow from two individual people into one cohesive couple. Then from me, Elizabeth Adams, Sons of Pemberley, my most recent release. And this one is a family saga that centers on the Darcy family, hence the name, Sons of Pemberley. And the Bennett family themselves are not really altered at all, but the Darcy family is altered in the sense that Lady Anne does not die. So she goes on to have more children. Everything is altered if she doesn't die. And that's the premise for the whole book. So I don't want to spoil it and tell you everything that happens, but there's a lot <laughs> that happens in that time. It spans over 25 years and it hops back and forth between two timelines. So we have the Darcy family in Pemberley and everything going on with them from the 1700s through the early 1800s. And then we have the Neverfield Hertfordshire storyline. So if that's confusing for you to go back and forth, here's a little trick. If you can see, not super well, but at the top of each chapter, it tells you where you are and more importantly, when you are. So this one says Pemberley, Derbyshire, spring 1795. So if it's confusing for you or you think that it will be to go back and forth, just start with the 1700 ones that are always somewhere in Derbyshire. Read all of that all the way through and then come back through to the 1811 storyline at Netherfield. And that is a much lighter, more fun storyline because Darcy arrives at Netherfield with his mom, Georgiana, and his little brother. <laughs> so it gets interesting, and a bunch of other people, but I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but it's a lot of original characters. I really enjoyed writing it, so I hope you enjoy reading it and then we can talk about it. So then Alex James, AKA Nicole Clarkson has released, or sorry, I should say is releasing. It's going to come out tomorrow. If you're watching this video on release day, that's Thursday, January 28th. She's releasing a new novella called A Fine Mind. And oh my gosh, I just read this and I loved it so much. 
So a couple things that I particularly loved about it is one, it's quick and easy. So if you don't want to spend a lot of time, you don't want to get sucked into an angst fest, if you just don't have that kind of energy, this is a good book for that. But I really loved that Georgiana Darcy is autistic, which is a huge spin. And so this story picks up at Pemberley when Elizabeth comes visiting with the gardeners and she meets Georgiana and very quickly realizes that things are not as she thought they were. And it goes on from there because it's short. If I tell you anymore, I'll ruin it. But I think you're really going to like it. I personally really loved this story. Then, last but not least, Amy Durazio released A Willful Misunderstanding. And I know we all have feelings about this book. <laughs> so this is the one that follows the idea of what if Darcy got really mad and shipped his wife off to a secluded estate in Scotland, only in this case, it's Yorkshire. And it's, it's an interesting story. It's painful. It will make you really, really mad. And I'm gonna recommend that you read this on a Kindle and not on your phone or, you know, paperback is even better because that way if you throw it, you won't break your phone. So <laughs> that's my recommendation. But basically, Darcy sends Elizabeth off. She doesn't take that lying down because what Elizabeth would. And they're estranged for two years and he has no idea where he is or where she is, sorry. And of course he looks for her because he's still Darcy, but she's good at hiding. So it's an interesting story. I won't spoil it for you. It does have a happy ending but it's going to be a little like ah, on your way to that happy ending. So those are the recent releases as far as novels go that happened over the autumn and winter. We also have a ton of audiobooks that have come out lately. So Joanna Starnes released an audio, A Timely Elopement, which was her hilarious novel from late spring. That's narrated by Stevie Zimmerman and seriously, it's so funny. You're going to love it. Shannon Winslow released Leap of Hope, which is just whimsical and magical and absolutely delightful. I'm listening to it right now. I'm really enjoying it. As well as Murder at Northanger Abbey. So we've missed Halloween, but I still think that's a really good like winter read or winter listen, kind of a cozy like indoor. And it's a funny, it's a funny murder mystery. It's not like scary murder, like, you know. And then My Book Shipped to Shore, which is the epistolary novel between the naval commander and the third grade teacher in North Carolina is out in audio. And incidentally, the short story that I put up on the blog last winter called Swap Meet is at the end of that. That is all now out in audio as well. And Lucy Marin released Being Mrs. Darcy, the big fat one. Oh my gosh, narrated by Harry Frost. So when you're driving, just make sure that you stay extra focused on the road, ladies. Don't get distracted by Harry and his vowels. Just focus on the road. And Maria Grace released A Less Agreeable Man, book three in her Queen of Rosings Park trilogy. So those are the books from Austin Variations authors. We've obviously been very busy. Happy reading. Happy listening. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.